Shalom and again a very warm welcome to all of you to today's episode of the Spirit and the Bride. Hallelujah. And so let those who are thirsty come and come and drink of the rivers of God. Hallelujah. The rivers of life. The rivers of His Word. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty for that wonderful Jesus. Let's just come to the Lord right now and just open our hearts to Him. And we just ask for that river to flow in us. Hallelujah. A river of life. Oh, we thank you for your river. For your word says in John 7, 38, that out of our innermost being will flow forth rivers of life. Lord, we thank you that you say in John 4, 14, oh, that he who drinks of you, that out of his belly will spring forth a fountain. Lord, even right now as we come to your word and to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we thank, we thank you that rivers are going to flow. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. You know, a couple of days ago as I was uh, praying for, for Penang, and the Lord showed me a beautiful, beautiful vision of a river flowing down all over Penang and it's like it's flowing from the eastern region to the west and it flows all the way to the mainland and the Bible tells us in Psalms 46 verse 4 and verse 5 that there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God and it says that God will be in her God will be her help and at the break of dawn. Hallelujah. That's Psalms 46 verse 5. God is in the midst of her. God will help her at the break of dawn. And it, it tells us that yes, we go through times of se and seasons where things seem to be dark and obscured. And we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we don't see any hope for some people. You know, they are living in a time of hopelessness and desperation. And they are so discouraged and down and depressed and anxious. But I want you to hear these people of God, that God will come and help at the break of the dawn. It means that there will be a time where everything will turn, do you hear that, for good. You see, there is a time for night, there is a time for day. Day comes after the night or light comes after darkness. So I believe that we are in a season that we're going to see that, that turning around of that breaking of dawn. Hallelujah. Praise God. And in that vision, I saw the river of God that flows. And it's the river that, that brings life. And I'm talking about spiritual life and natural life. Remember in Ezekiel 47, wherever that river touches, it everything that the river touches, it brings to life the river of god has a power of creativity and it's a life-giving river that brings dead bone back to life hallelujah and in that river i saw is a river of life is a river of resources is a river of cleansing don't forget that it's a river of sanctification it's a river of nourishment and enrichment Hallelujah. And it's a river that will water the dry places, both spiritual and also economical. Hallelujah. And we thank the Lord for that wonderful Jesus. And today, remember this is the time that we are, we are spending these wonderful precious minutes with the Holy Spirit. So I'm very much in the Spirit as I speak to you right now. Oh, yes, Lord. And I know that there are people today who needs that river to flow in their life. I know that there are people today 
where the rest of the wall had become empty and dry and, and they cannot draw waters anymore because their wells are empty because of the seasons of challenges and opposition and sometimes the enemy add on to that and he put sand and stones and boulders into your well so that it cannot it cannot accumulate water and that's why you have been dry but I decree over you that there's going to be running waters running into your well again oh yes there will be a river flowing again into your life hallelujah that will nourish you that will encourage you that will edify you and that will strengthen you and it'll be a it'll be a, a river that brings healing, that brings reconciliation, that brings restorations. Hallelujah. And compensation as well. Thank you for that, Lord. Glory to your name. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I want to just show you a couple of verses and let's go to Exodus. And Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4, 5 and 6. I want to read this to you. Verse 4, it says, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. And I want to make this personal for you tonight. Or whatever time of day you are watching this. That God wants to bring you to himself. Hallelujah. And verse 5 he says. Therefore if you will indeed. There's prefix condition there. If you will indeed obey my voice. Says the Lord. And keep my covenant. It's very important that you do both. Obey his voice. His Rama and his logos. And keep his covenant, that relationship that you are cultivating with him. And then God says, well, you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. It means that he will highly favor you. He will highly elevate you. And he will highly treasure you. And he will highly enrich you. Hallelujah. And verse 6 says that you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. A holy nation and we know today that, that this word this spiritual principle applies to us gentiles as well because we have been brought into the covenant of abraham as the seat at the ass of jesus hallelujah but let's go to verse 4 here and, and and i just want to expound on this word here the lord say you have seen what i did to the egyptians i wanted to hear this word today you are going to see with your eyes how God will vindicate you, how God will defend you and He will vindicate you and how He will deliver you and how He will punish your enemies. Do you hear that? And when I say your enemies, I, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about demonic influences and demonic manipulations. And God will punish that. God will judge those evil and those demonic manipulations. God will bring it to light and God will bring justice to your situation. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord for that. And I want you to hear this. That you will see that with your own eyes. How God will manifest His goodness to you. And how God will deliver you out of your predicament and out of every difficult situation that you are in. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And then in verse 4, it says, How I bore you on eagles' wings. Huh. Now, when I read this word, I, I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, how did you, how did you bear an entire nations on your wings and the Lord just gave me this analogy of of a mama eagle 
that would dive down deep into the valley when a baby eaglet would fall from the nest in a high place and the baby eaglet couldn't fly their wings are still you know fragile and, and, and they are weak and they cannot fly and they will fall off the nest from time to time they do that you know baby eagles eaglets and and mama eagle would dive all the way down to the valley and she would catch that baby eaglet before it hit the ground and mama eagle would bear that eaglet again on its wings and bring it back to the nest again and there was an analogy that the lord gave me and i see this because you see here people of god when the israelites came out from egypt they were slaves for have many years they have been slaves they have they have been in bondage they have a slave mentality they have a fatherless and orphan spirit and they couldn't fly they couldn't fly because they do not know what it means to fly they have never tasted freedom before in that sense and so god has to come like an eagle to carry them up to elevate them above the enemies and they saw that how god parted the red sea how god drowned their enemies in the red sea and how god brought them through the years in the wilderness how god fought their battles against the amalekites and all kinds of battles and all kinds of challenges that they faced in the wilderness and they saw that and that's how god bore them on eagles wings people and he does the same with you hallelujah And he will do the same for everyone who cried out to him and everyone who come to him and everyone who has broken wings and shuffled feathers and you cannot flap your wings the bible says hear this wait upon the lord and you shall mount up on wings like eagles and you will not be weary you will not faint you will have strength again you will have fresh visions again and your, your, your wings will be strengthened and you'll be able to soar to the greater heights that you've never been before. Hallelujah. And He wants to bear you up again on His wings, to carry you higher, to take you higher, to elevate you above every storm and above the current. You know there are different different levels of air current in the atmosphere and the higher you go the easier it is to soar but there are stages that for you to get from level one to perhaps level seven there will be all kinds of resistance and turbulence and sometimes in our process of soaring we face turbulences hallelujah but nevertheless we go through them sometimes we go through the obscurity of clouds where we cannot see what lies beyond but god who sees the end from the beginning he knows where he's taking you these are prophetic words for people who are hearing these today oh jesus and then in verse 4 he says that how I bore you on eagle's wings to bring you to myself. That's what God wants for everyone. Hallelujah. He wants to bring you to himself. You see, the, the ultimate destiny of every child of God is to know God intimately and to see God face to face. Oh, you didn't hear that. Let me try it again. I say the ultimate destiny of every child of God is to know God intimately and to see Him face to face. To abide in His presence. But you say, what about the promised land? That's part of the package. Yes, God was bringing them into the promised land. God was bringing them into their liberation, into their freedom into the promises that he had the good plans the goodness that he had already planned for them yes all those are part of the package but your ultimate destiny is god himself he brings you to himself that's why i say come to me 
You see, when you come to a church, you are not just going to visit the church or see the pastors or see your friends. You are going to church to see God. God is always the ultimate destiny of our pursuit. And He brings us to Himself. Hallelujah. And then He says in verse 5, And therefore, if you will indeed, if there's a condition attached there, if you will indeed obey, obey, obedience is more precious than gold and silver. It's greater than sacrifices. If you will obey my voice, and that voice speaks about the Ramah voice, and how can you obey God's voice unless you first make it your intention to hear His voice? And how can you hear His voice unless you spend time to do so? And make it your pursuit to hear Him. You know, I tell people this and I don't boast in this. I boast in the Lord. And in all humility, I tell you this, I cannot live one day without hearing the voice of God. Because I will feel so dry, so disoriented, so down, so disillusioned if I don't hear His voice. I don't live on bread alone, but I live on every word of God that proceeds from His mouth. And I pray the same for you too. And if you indeed obey my voice, verse 5 then, and you say, and also what? Keep my commandment, my covenant, sorry. And the covenant here speaks about that relationship that he has already established for us on the cross. It's a relationship that God offered to everyone who comes to him freely and willingly. Hallelujah. And what does God say? Then, 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 if you would do this too, hear His voice, obey His voice, keep His covenant. He says what? You shall be. You shall be. It's a promise. You shall be. Special treasure. You know, when I hear this word, I say, Lord, I want to be your special treasure. I want to be the apple of your eye. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing for the bride, to prepare the bride to be the apple of his eyes, to be the pomegranate of his heart. There's a new phrase there. <laughs> and you'll be a special treasure to God above all people, where he highly favored you, he highly treasure, highly elevate you. And He highly enrich you. And He enrich you in everything, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, as well as materially. Yes, God wants to bless you. He blessed the patriarchs. He blessed Abraham. He blessed Jacob out of the house of Laban. He blessed His people. He blessed David. He blessed Solomon. God is a blesser and He cannot change but don't run after the blessing. Run after the Lord. Pursue Him because our ultimate goal, our ultimate destiny, our ultimate pursuit is not for a blessing. It's not even for our inheritance. No. It is for God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With this, I want to bless you. And again, that river is still flowing. <laughs> and just tell the Lord, Lord, I want to come to you. Lord, I want more, more, more of your river. And for that to happen, give more of yourself to Him. Empty your belly. <laughs> Empty yourself of all the garbage and all the unwarranted data from the world and let God renew you and refresh you. Hallelujah. And let His river flow into your life again. That you will be a well-watered garden, precious treasure, special treasure, glorious bride, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this. 
Bless them, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.